we lose in middle school, and it's important that we don't lose these things because there's a lot of research to suggest that when students move around, they're able to learn and to activate different parts of the brain that will help them to recall information again in the future. So using movement in the classroom, using audio and visual media, this is a good um, example. This presentation is a good example of um, visual media, not such a great um, example of audio media, though, that can be used. And then tactile senses, um, giving students the chance to manipulate objects, to really um, to feel and move um, and use their um, spatial awareness to develop their learning. Technology is perhaps my favorite source of differentiation because it really gives students the opportunity to control the pace of their learning. This is an example of an account that I created on Khan Academy that I use with uh, many of my students. And I'm able to assign assignments to the students and they can really um, pace their learning. They can um, spend more time on um, topics that are more challenging for them. They can access videos and, and um, audio resources and other online manipulatives to help deepen their learning. And then they can accelerate through things that are perhaps uh, more simple for them. So I, I often find that differentiation through technology is a very effective um, tool. Now we've touched on the first three um, accomplished practices, the instructional design, learning environment, delivery, and now assessment. And in terms of assessment, I'm really talking about giving students information about their performance so that they can improve. I think that many students, especially as they get into middle school, are very concerned about what grade they're receiving. Did I get an A? Did I get a B? And I think that assessment is much more, uh, is much deeper than that, and that in the sense that it should really give students information so that they can choose to improve their, their performance. And there are a few ways that we do that. Providing student feedback. We need to focus not only on the um, outcome, the summative assessment, the grade that students get, but also on growth and progress. Hoy and Hoy 2013 say that feedback emphasizing progress is the most effective. By helping students to understand how they're growing and what they need to do to grow more really uh, encourages them to focus on the effort that they're putting in, which is the second point here. That students need to develop the belief that the harder they work, the smarter they will get. And that's from Dean 2012. And effort is something that I've found um, can be challenging to describe to middle schoolers because many middle schoolers, at least the ones that I teach, struggle to know the difference between a little bit of effort and really strong effort. So I found this tool in the Dean book on page 27, which I'm thinking to incorporate into my classrooms. And this is an effort rubric. I feel like it's important to really train students and help students to reflect on what type of effort will produce better achievement for them. Um, unsatisfactory effort is I just read my notes one time. And then excellent effort on this side is I reread the text, I compared the text to the notes, I added to the notes, I um, sought help from others when I didn't understand, I went to see a study partner. That's excellent effort and will oftentimes lead to very good achievement. So in terms of assessment, providing students feedback, not only their achievement, but also on their effort, is crucial in an effective learning environment. Teacher feedback. When we get feedback, when we give feedback to students, we also get feedback, and that's formative assessment, helping to monitor progress and adjust if necessary. And I like to use a tool called Socrative.com, which gives students the ability to answer questions using an iPad or a computer in real time, and the teacher can see which questions the students are answering correctly or incorrectly. And this is an example of the screen. This shows seven questions and several students, I've taken their names off, but each row is a different student. And I can see, for example, if this was at the beginning of a lesson, I might give them a few questions just to see how much they know about a topic. And for question one, most of them are in pretty good shape. For question two, the same thing, but when we get to question three, I can see that a lot of the students got the answer wrong. So that's probably something that I need to focus on during my lesson. And we can also look at at it horizontally as well, that this student, student number three, struggled. That student number three struggled on several of the questions. So that student struggling on several things will probably need some individual attention, whereas these students down here are very strong all the way across. 
So perhaps they can be paired with another student to help um, deepen their understanding of some of the more challenging concepts. So that's a method of um, formative feedback that I use, is getting feedback from the students to influence instruction. And then measuring achievement, our summative assessment, is also an important part of effective instruction. Summative assessment should provide both the students with an accurate sense of their current status and how far they have to go. It's important to help students to know what they've achieved and what they need to learn next. And this is a tool from Holt McDougall Online um, that I use. This correlates with my math textbook and it shows the students um, which standards they've achieved well on and which ones perhaps they need a bit of help with. So I could use this tool to sit down with students or sit down with parents and evaluate these are the standards that you've achieved and these are the standards that you need some help with in order to, to continue to grow. And that's our assessment. So we've gone through the first four educator accomplished practices and I'm just going to summarize. Is this really works as a cycle? Is our instructional design, our lesson, our learning objectives um, creates the learning environment which influences delivery, which gives us an opportunity for effective feedback. And Marzano, in his most recent publication, says that effective feedback begins with clearly defined and clearly communicated learning goals. So in order to get to the end, we have to focus on a strong beginning. What learning is going to take place and how we communicated that effectively with the students. And if we do that, then we'll get good data at the end that we can then use to better construct our learning goals for the next time. So here are my references. Feel free to pause the video if you wish to take a look at these. And that is the end of my presentation. I want to thank you for listening. I look forward to hearing your comments about the qualities of effective instruction in middle school. Thank you.